All right, so today I have a video about reduce. More or less, uh, there was a refactor I did in my code where pri previously I was not using reduce, and then I switched to using reduce, and it looks so much nicer. So yeah, I just feel like sharing it. All right, let's get it. Okay, so first and foremost, what is reduce? Um, I found the documentation. Let me scroll up so you can see where I am. Reduce is a method that you can call on an iterator. Reduce reduces the elements to a single one by repeatedly applying a reducing operation. If the iterator is empty, returns none. Otherwise, returns the result of the reduction. And they have some more stuff here, but that's just in reference to another method. Um, so here's reduce as a signature, right? We have the reduce self f. This is just a generic and it tur returns an option self item and self being the iterator. Cool. So you scroll down here to the example, right? They created a fine maximum value where they did a fine max I iterator I. So I is going to be an iterator and then re they return I dot item well, uh, colon, colon, item, which is the associated type of the iterator. And then the constraints they put on it where I has to be an iterator and the item has to be ordered. Now, the reason why the item has to be ordered is so that you can do comparisons like this, like greater than or equal to. All right, moving down to the body of the function, we have iter dot reduce A and B. So what is A and B? To my knowledge, A and B are two items that are in the iterator. So we can take A, we can take B, and then we're going to compare them. So if A is greater than or equal to B, return A, else return B. And if you reply this reducing, what did you call it? Reducing operation. If you apply this reducing operation over and over and over, then you will get the largest item. And here in their example, they have A is a vector of 10, 25, negative 23, and 0. And then here you have find max a iterator, because you pass in the iterator, and a return sum pointed to the item 20. Now for that refactor I talked about. So in a previous video, I talked about building a cache for a warp application where you could store previously seen items, and then once the cache reached a certain limit, you could drop the oldest item by doing a check of the date, date time. I didn't like the way that was written. And you can see it here. So just as a refresher, we have a cast item which has a result, which is a 30 value, 30 JSON value, and a date, right? And then we have our cast, which is has items, which is a hash map of a key and a cast item. And then this is the size, which is the limit of the cache. So coming down to where that gets enforced. So theoretically, if we add an item to the cache and that new item brings us above the limit or over the limit that we're allowed to have based on our size, then we need to enforce the size limit. And that's coming down here. So this is may not be exactly what I originally wrote. It might be because I can't remember what I wrote in the video. But this is a version of it where here I check to see if the the length of the items is greater than the size. And if so, I need to enforce the size limit. So here I started initializing values for the result key and result value. It initializes them to none. Then I do a iteration over the items, getting the key and the value. Then I'm doing an if check saying if the value that clone is none or if the result value unwrap date is greater than value date because value is the one we're iterating over and these are the ones we just stored as temporary values. So if the temporary values date is greater than the one we're checking values date, 
then we need to make a switch. Then we store the result key, as in this is going to be the current key. Store it to string. And we s store the result value, some value, which was the current value. And this is more or less the reducing operation, right? And then after that, I checked to see if there was a key. If there is a key, then I was able to do a remove. Remove based on the key. And then in the return value, I recreated a, uh, well, I instantiated a cache return, which is a different object altogether, but just as the return. More or less, this is what I wanted to refactor. Here's what it looks like when you use reduce. Here's the if statement for the length, if it's greater than the size. Time to enforce some stuff. Self.items.iter is the same so far. And then I have the reduce, which is going to take in item one, item two. Now, one thing to consider, or at least to remember, is that for me, my item is both a key and a cast item. So A and B are both tuples, right? Where index zero is going to be the key and then index one is going to be the cast item. Which brings me down to this line. So if I look at the cast item date for A, and if that is greater than the B cast item date, return B, else return A. And like I said in the note here, this is just me comparing the cast item. And then lastly, because now that I've gotten the um, oldest cast item, I look at that result, I go to the first item in the tuple, which is the key, and I clone it. And then after that, I unwrap it, which means this is the key as is. There is no option here. And then under that, or after that, I can do a direct self.items remove key, and then just cast it to a um, lowercase string, stir unwrap that, and then do that return value thing that I mentioned before. But more or less, a lot of the code that was in the last version got removed just because I was able to use a reduce instead. And let me point out those lines. So if we come here, I no longer needed a temporary result key. I no longer need a temporary result value. I no longer need to check this first condition that's gone. I no longer need to set these variables. I mean, I set a new variable, but that's about it. And then I no longer need to do this check. All because I decided to use a reduce and an unwrap here, but mostly this reduce. So yeah, we've reached the end of the video. That's really all I wanted to share today. And I hope that via watching this, someone else realizes that they could refactor their code from doing all of this extra stuff to just using a reduce. I mean, that's what I'm going to think about in the future. Now, if you liked the video, hit like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Outside of that, till next time. Peace.